Well, hi everybody. Joel from JST Woodcraft here. Uh, it's been a very interesting first year here in Florida. So we moved down here. I got a couple of videos shot. We did some things. I started uh, a job search, started a new job, and then came into the Christmas rush with the Woodcraft stuff. So I haven't had time to do much uh, in front of the camera. It took me the better part of this morning just to get back up to speed with my lighting and all the things that I need to do. My shop is a total wreck from uh, my Christmas uh, activities. So I don't have the best of backgrounds. I didn't think we should be outside. Uh, it's not good weather today. So uh, here we are. So first shoot, uh, getting back into business. I had a couple of requests from people asking me how I lay out the labels uh, in my uh, label design program for doing my uh, wrapped tubes for my label casting. So today I put that video together. I recorded it on the computer so that it's very easy for everybody to see. Uh, I think you'll find it very useful just for laying out the guides and how you kind of manipulate it to work for whatever size tube you're casting for. So I hope you find the video useful. Uh, thanks for sticking with me. I hope to be here much more often going forward and let's learn about creating templates and pages on a Mac. So when I'm setting up a new label template, uh, I, I always start with the information that's provided by the manufacturer. So uh, I'm here on onlinelabels.com website. I'm on the OL800WJ a label. Now these labels I use for uh, probably 80-90% of all the casting work I do. Um, they're weatherproof so they work really well and lock in the ink in. <clears throat> And, and do a good job with uh, wrapping around the tubes. There's a portion here that's very important under here under detailed specs and you, you always want to try to find this information. If you can't find it, of course you could use a ruler and, and try to work it out, but it's helpful when you have this from the manufacturer. So if you click on this, you'll see it takes you down here to your specifications. <clears throat> now some of the things here that are important, we want to know the width of the label, we want to know the height of the label, so that will help us with our templates. We also want to know the bottom margin, top margin, left and right margin. That is the distance from the edges of the paper to the beginning of the label. And that will get us the top, the bottom, the left, and the right edge of the entire document. <clears throat> Horizontal spacing, vertical spacing, uh, that's the gap between the labels. So there is a little bit of a gap where one label ends, there's some white area, and the next label begins, and that's your horizontal spacing. So those are also important. Uh, and I'm going to show you some tricks on how to manage that within your application. Now I'm on a Mac, uh, so this is going to be doing most of the work in pages, well all the work in pages. Uh, if you have a PC, I recommend Publisher. It has very much of the same tools. Uh, the theory and everything here is the same. Uh, you just might have to find out where some of those tools are at. So <clears throat> let's get started here in Pages. Now what you can see here is I have drawn a square uh, composed of four lines. And you can see these are all four separate lines here. These, these lines represent those margins or that half an inch and the 0.375 inches. So half an inch from the top of the page, half an inch from the bottom of the page, and the 0.375 from the left and the 0.375 from the right. Now within uh, pages, it gives me some useful information here. So if I click on this line, uh, you can see here that I am 0.53 inches from the top. So I'm not quite where I want to be. Uh, so I am going to grab a hold of this line and I am going to move it until I have 0.5. All right, I'm going to also check the bottom line here. This is an 11, 8.5 by 11 page, so um, I'm 11 inches to the bottom, 10.5, which would be a half an inch up. And as you can see here, that is correct. On these lines here, uh, 
same thing, you know, with that, that same distance from the left, distance from the right. Now, what, what I'm going to tell you here is every printer, every computer uh, is going to do something a little different. You know, some of these dimensions are uh, driven by the printer drivers that come with your computer and how your computer interprets the information coming from your application. So what I recommend you doing, once you've laid all this out, print it on a black sheet of paper, hold it up behind your labels and see how close those lines line up with the edges of your labels. Uh, and give yourself some working room. So now we know the outer dimensions here. And if you, we come back to the document over here, you know, we can see that a label is two and a half by 1.5625 high. I'm gonna copy this because I may not remember this when we get to the other side. I know the two and a half. So what I'm gonna do here in pages is I'm gonna create a square. I'm just gonna go to a shape here and I've got a square. And I know my width, all right, which is the, the length here. I know it's weird, but this is how these things interpret is 2.5 inches, right? And I know my height is that number I just copied. So I'm putting those numbers in here. Now, this program is going to round up. So you're going to see it's going to take me to 1.56. It just is what it is. Uh, and we'll, we'll deal with that adjustment uh, as we do prints and match it up to the back of the labels. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this up to the top corner here. That's my first label. I know from this document here that I have 18 labels per page. Uh, I know from you know the use of this and seeing the document here, I've got three uh, labels across and six down. So I'm going to basically just copy and paste three of these just so that I have them here. All right, now obviously it's going to be difficult to get this perfect uh, without some help from the computer. So I'm going to come back to my document here. And remember our horizontal spacing was 0.125. So I will, in pages, I will create another shape. This time I will create a width of 0.125. Now I have a little sliver. I'm going to change the color of this because if I don't, it's just going to vanish. Uh, in, with the others. And now I have my, my vertical spacing. So I can zoom in and we can see how this looks. So I know if I bring this right here, this box needs to slide over a bit and that should have me pretty close to this side here. And remember there was some rounding, so things are gonna be not quite right and we're gonna have to tweak them. I also think this one should be right like that. <clears throat> so you gotta you gotta play around with it a little bit. Make sure you know you're putting things where they need to be. And now we should be pretty spot on here if we go over to the end. Yep, right over. So now you'll see if I zoom out, I now have my three with a 0.125 gap. So now I just have to repeat this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna rotate it 90 degrees. Since the, the remember the, the gap between the horizontal and the vertical, it's the same dimension, it's 0.125. So I can lay this out here Put this right up against the document. Now, one of the things you see happening here is you notice when I get close, it kind of just snaps in place. So you want to make sure you have snap to grid or snap to edge or whatever your program uses uh, to define that. That just always gets you close. All right. I also know I can see here that this one's a little low. So I'm going to bring that one up. Make sure they're all the same in the exact same place. All right, now we're just going to take advantage of some of the copy and paste tools. So I'm going to click on this. <clears throat> I'm going to hold down my command button. On a PC, it would be control. I'm going to select all three of these. I'm going to right click and I'm going to say group. Now there it's one, it's one image. The, these things will move together. So now I'm going to copy and I'm going to paste. And now I will get three. Now, my program does this. I don't know why. 
Uh, it just it just gets funny when you copy and paste it resizes. Probably doing something wrong, but uh, whatever. So I know I'm gonna need six of these, right? So we got one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, and we're gonna have to play games with this to to resize this. So as you all know, I don't like to uh, script my videos. I just like to do things as they go. So I'm just going to bring this one up. Actually, you know what? We're going to do this differently since the program doesn't like this grouping. I'm just going to ungroup them and we'll just do one at a time. When I do that for some reason, it doesn't mess with the sizes. So I'm just going to copy, paste, move my marker. If you can get to know your computer's keyboard strokes uh, for doing a lot of this work, it is certainly a, sign, uh, a time saver. All right, so we should be able to get one more here. I don't know what kind of bugs exist in the app, other apps, but you know, you just learn to work around them, that's all. All right, so we're gonna do this again up here. Now it can go a little faster because as you can see, I have these guides coming on and it shows me that I'm aligned here, I'm aligned here, and I'm centered with that. Uh, so if you can see those yellow lines there, those are very helpful guides uh, to kind of move things forward quickly here. I'm just going to keep cutting and pasting, lining up. There we go. So there we have our labels. Now, for me, I, I like cutting guides. So if I print this, I'm going to have the boxes, but I'm not going to have a good understanding of where I, I need to cut. Those, those guides will change based on the pen kit that you're using. So if you're using a pen kit that has a blank, you know, has a tube that's two inches long, you'll need to make your guides so, so that each one of these are two inches long. So let's go down that path. So I'm gonna go over here to my black line. All right, and I'm gonna copy and paste it. So now I have another black line here that I can play with. I'm going to look at this box. The box is showing a width of two and a half inches. So I'm going to change that to two inches. And now I know where a two inch tube length would be. So I'm going to put that line right there. And I'll oops, grab the wrong thing. And I'll pull that all the way down to the bottom. Now, if you can, I like to actually take my lines a little over. This way, when I'm cutting, I see where the line starts and I can line up my cutter properly. All right, and then I would just continue down that path of, of laying this out. Now, I will copy this line again, create a new one, and I will put it at the maximum here. All right, so this is, this is the end of my label. I can't go any further because this is how, it's the physical boundaries of the label. All right, and I will do that in each place. So a good way to start is to get these boundary lines set up and then you can resize according to um, the size of the tube you need. I need one on each side here. And once you've done this a few times, you'll get pretty good at it. I, I like to save uh, a, a different sheet for every single type of pen tube that I am going to label. I'll put a text box up here. 
so that I can remember what the document is. You know, um, let's just say, for instance, this, this is a Sierra. It is not properly dimensioned for a Sierra, so don't take me, but I'm just typing it. And it's this way I know, and I'll also save it as such. Um, I will also put in the name, I usually put the tube length and the type of tube. So I'll say, you know, it's a seven millimeter by 1.9 or it's 10.5 millimeter by 2.2. Uh, and that way when I have to go out and maybe make a tube, you know, sometimes I don't have the right tube length and I've got to trim a tube, uh, I, I know what I'm working with there and it's just an easy way to remember that. So you have your template. This is it. You're done. Um, you do do need to, I'm sorry, we're not done yet. You, you do need to do the top and the bottoms here. That's important also. So you're just trying to create a place where you can drag in your artwork and you have a, a working surface for the, the sizing, you know, what type of stretching or other types of techniques you may be using to properly lay out your, your artwork. And that, that's a whole nother conversation and a, uh, a really long process to, to learn how you're going to manipulate all the things that you're going to be working with, you know, with regards to colors and backgrounds and transparencies and overlays and all these types of things. And those, those trick tips and tricks are best you best learned. I think, um, you know, going to some of the YouTube pages that are specific to that application, uh, so many people have so many different tools. Some use paint, some use, you know, like for me, I use Photoshop a lot for a lot of my photo manipulation. Uh, and some of those tools are easy to use and some of those tools are quite complicated. All right, so now we have our, we have our template here, right? So now we have a two inch box. So what I can do to make it simple moving across here, I can just delete these. And now I can move over the box that I need, and I can move over the guide, all right? Move over the box, move over the guide. It's, it's, it's literally just that simple. And now what I have is I have three boxes, the right dimension, and I can just drag in whatever artwork I need and, and lay it out. Uh, I hope you found this useful. Uh, I think this is pretty quick and dirty uh, on how I do what I do. Uh, I'm not trying to get too technical here, uh, but laying out labels and uh, pages on a Mac.